Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Safety and Health webcast, Linking Mobile Devices and Workplace Safety, sponsored by Columbia Southern University. This is Alan Ferguson, Associate Editor at Safety and Health Magazine, and I'm moderating today's session. Thank you all for joining us. We're going to start the presentation in a couple minutes, but first I want to go over some preliminary items. The views of today's speaker and organizations are their own and do not necessarily reflect those of the National Safety Council or Safety and Health Magazine. Any mention of a commercial enterprise, product, or publication does not mean the council or magazine endorses those items. At the end of today's webcast, we will conduct a question and answer session. To ask a question, simply type it in the text box in the lower left-hand corner of your screen and click the button for Submit Question. Feel free to ask your question at any time during this presentation. You don't have to wait for the Q&A to begin. We'll try to answer as many questions as possible, but we might not get to every question. Any unanswered questions will be forwarded to today's speaker. At the end of the webcast, you'll be asked to complete a brief evaluation survey, and I will let you know more about that after this presentation. This webcast is archived, but so you can access it after today's live event. To view this webcast and all of our past webcasts, go to safetyandhealthmagazine.com slash events. And finally, if you need basic troubleshooting information, click the Help button located on your screen. With that, let's get started. Our speaker today is Ralph Blessing, an adjunct professor at Columbia Southern University. Ralph has three decades of experience in the occupational safety and health field, including general industry and construction, along with training and public speaking. He is a retired veteran of the U.S. Navy, who received his safety management certification and became certified as an afloat safety manager. Ralph, whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Good afternoon. Uh, today, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, I appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing cell phone and other electronic distractions that affect the workplace. And uh, particular interest will be the distracted driving aspect of uh, cell phone usage, and we would call that a work zone, and then in the construction industry. What we'll talk about is common cell phone usage in the world, uh, some background uh, of exposures, types of exposures on areas we should be looking for, how to manage the cell phone hazards on the job site, included, as I mentioned earlier, distracted driving, uh, talk about cell phones and when we're using construction machinery, uh, the concept of uh, distracted employees, and then other issues that can be attributed to the use of cell phones. And then we'll talk about OSHA and their cell phone policies uh, on the job site, distracted driving, so forth, and some efforts that were put into place by the Department of Labor and the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. Uh, talk about where cell phones are of good use or positive use uh, on the job site, especially in construction. And then finally, what is it you can do to help make your cell phone usage or cell phone implementation on a job site uh, a positive or negative side and or what we can do for our employees? Okay, this is an interesting uh, when we talk about cell phone usage in the world. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Heck, 8.98 billion mobile connections worldwide, and there's only 7.69 billion people in the world. So obviously, we know other uh, individuals have two cell phones. I mean, I have two cell phones, right? And look at these uh, numbers here in the statistics. 66.72% of the world population are unique subscribers. And this is since 1973 when mobile device connections were conceived. And it has, as, as indicated, surpassed the world population. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is the fastest growing man-made technology in the history of the world. Nothing else has ever been like this or is going to be like this as far as I can tell. China, of course, as indicated above, has the largest population of users in the world, but only half of their population actually uses a cell phone. So this is indicative of um, many of them having two cell phones. The United Arab Emirates has the largest user market in the world, with over 82% of the population using cell phones. Now remember, the United Arab Emirates is a small when it comes to population, but uh, obviously two, three, four cell phones is not unheard of. And within our country, the United States, we have uh, 235 million users representing 71.5% of the population, 
of which 94% of the users are between 18 and 29 years old, are millennials. 94%. And uh, I'm sure you see this every day in restaurants, uh, anywhere you go, everywhere you go. Uh, young people have a cell phone, and uh, they're using it all the time. All right, let's look at some background exposure. User hazard safety, the exposure from cell phones or mobile devices can be put into various categories. We have the user safety hazards indicated above, which include direct, distracted driving, distraction on job sites, and under distraction of job sites, we have texting, talking, and gaming. And when we talk about how does this affect the employees, uh, we're looking at spatial awareness, what it is happening around you. Uh, do you hear things? Do you see things? Do you smell things? These are all important because if you're focused on a cell phone, and we all know this because we're, working, we're on them all day long, you actually lose track of what's happening around you. You lose that spatial awareness. Uh, recognizing hazards. Uh, as as you, I'm sure you've seen on YouTube, people on cell phones and some of the, I don't want to call it dumb things, but they are dumb things that they do, falling into a water fountain, running into trees, running into a, a poles or whatever. And then the operation of hazardous equipment or any equipment while you're using a cell phone. Right. And then, of course, we have the, the possibility of fire, explosion, uh, fire or explosion from the cell phones uh, being left in cars, being set up on our uh, dashboards, even while we're driving, Exci uh, direct sunlight and that. So there's things that we need to worry about. Remember earlier I mentioned that 94% of the users in the U.S. are between the ages of 18 and 29 years old. And we talked about gaming under distraction on job sites. Video gaming is one of the fastest growing entertainment industries in the United States. And in 2018, 29% of all video gamers were between the ages of 18 and 35 years old. And this represented the largest group. So we have our, our group of 18 to 24 that use the cell phone, the largest users. And out of this, 29% between 18 and 35 years old are gamers. Uh, so that's something to think about. How many of your employees may be out there gaming or playing a game on the cell phone? Uh, while they're supposedly working, or they are working and not paying attention as they should be. So look at this driving. In 2017, National Highway Transportation Safety Administration put out their statistics, and it showed there were a total of 21 or 3,166 fatalities from distracted driving, of which 434 can be directly attributed to cell phone usage. That equates to 14% of the fatalities. So in 2010, the OSHA and the Secretary of Labor, Solis, signed into law with the Cooperation Department Transportation Initiative to combat distracted driving. This is where OSHA really started putting their teeth into cell phone usage. Uh, and in this case, I'd, I'd like to bring up a, uh, an important aspect. A, a personal, uh, on a personal note, I had a very good friend down in Atlanta who was a senior VP uh, for a construction company. And uh, one day he was at school dropping his uh, children off at the local school and had gotten back to his, into his van and was driving out of the uh, parking area or the, the school area. And his van got a phone call from work and was talking to somebody at work and unfortunately ran into the back of another vehicle. And the driver of the other vehicle was left a paraplegic. Uh, when it was all settled in court and that, it, the complete ruling turned out to be about $15 million, of which only his insurance company would cover $7.5 million because he was on a cell phone. The other $7.5 million he had to get himself, that included putting his house up, mortgage, everything else he had to do to come up with that $7.5 million. That's a very expensive cell phone call. Uh, so something to think about. Of note, OSHA had uh, a number of citations. Uh, one of them on 14 April 2014, when an employee was killed because he was listening to music on his cell phone and did not hear the backup alarm on a bulldozer. Uh, the OSHA cited the employer under the general duty clause uh, $11,408. And, and that's just the, the, the citation to the employer. Imagine how the employee felt that killed this other employee, even though it was the other employee's fault. Uh, 10 September 2015, an employee was struck by a dump truck because he was talking on his cell phone, not paying attention. OSHA cited the employer $7,000 under the general duty clause. 1 April 2016, a uh, dump truck struck a superintendent and killed him. The driver of the truck was on his phone. OSHA cited the employer $11,224 once again under the general duty clause. 
Uh, it's interesting because, as we know, general duty clause covers everything that isn't included within a standard of some sort. Of course, under this falls ergonomics also, but that's a completely different story. Okay, now we're getting into OSHA's Distracted Driving Initiative of 2010. And in it, OSHA states, it is your responsibility and legal obligation to have a clear, unequivocal, and enforced policy against texting while driving. Companies are in violation of the OSHA Act if, by policy or practice, they require texting while driving or create incentives that encourage or condone it, or they structure one, or they structure work, I'm sorry, so that the texting is a practical necessity for workers to carry out their jobs. OSHA will investigate worker complaints and employers who violate the law will be subject. So look at this. So OSHA has put out a policy, and, and as, as in many instances, OSHA's standards are very ambiguous. Uh, they don't put their finger directly on it because there are instances or issues uh, that may arise that, that you cannot get around it. However, uh, I think in this case, OSHA is a little more finite with exactly what they're looking for. Uh, so they could use a general duty clause uh, to cite companies for their employees texting while driving, even if the employers have no texting policy. Remember this, we have policies. Most employers will have a policy. It doesn't mean that our employees are always following those policies. However, we as the employer are required to ensure the employees do so. If you're caught or your employees are caught, of violating that policy, you would be cited. Your employees could be cited. However, I can guarantee you, you would be cited, even though your employees know the rules or regulations. And remember, uh, under the new policies, new changes to citations, a willful violation could be up to $124,709. Once again, it's very expensive for a cell phone call. Well, probably the largest area of exposure and, and this happens, I don't I couldn't tell you, if we, if we have 10 million job sites, active job sites around the United States, as OSHA says we have, uh, there's a lot of equipment going on. And then imagine on the road, the truckers especially, the 18-wheelers out there. And if you live in any major metropolitan area, you see trucks and they're backing up traffic forever. And, by the way, uh, I travel a lot from, from Pennsylvania out to Chicago. And the number of 18-wheelers I see that are flipped over on the side of the road, Highway 80, 81, 83, uh, or even running into, to having run into something. It, it, it's amazing. The numbers are staggering. I couldn't tell you. I could probably get the video recordings and then count them, but it is amazing. So we have that under 29 CFR 1926.1417, subpart D, OSHA specifically prohibits the use of mobile phones and cranes and derricks, and OSHA will investigate and, where necessary, issue citations and penalties to end this practice. I myself am currently involved, as I mentioned, driving out to Chicago on demolition of a retired coal-burning power plant, and uh, have, they have seven union operators running very large pieces of equipment. Uh, and, and my number one priority is to monitor the usage of cell phones uh, by having safety soups watch out for those different operators. Uh, did have one operator that was using his um, hands-free cell phone, and uh, in doing so, actually did not realize that his piece of machinery was running out of fuel, and it did so. And, of course, then it was difficult to try and refuel that piece of machinery. So it can happen. People aren't paying attention. And, and I hate to say common sense, but, but let's be truthful here. Common sense shouldn't be playing a role in this area. It, 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 it's just lunacy. It's complete lunacy. So what is it we're looking for in, in the aspect of distracted employees? Uh, we already know mobile phones impair employee recognition and reaction. There's no doubt. It, it happens every day. It happens probably to you. It's happened to me as I'm driving down the road, speaking to somebody on my hands-free, and I, I go past my, my exit on the highway, which I've taken for the last 10 years. And, and it, just, it just happens. You're not paying attention. But the big thing is, is, is the, the, the machinery passing machinery? Are you paying attention? Do you hear the backup alarms? Do you hear the horn going off? You know, a lot of times we don't pay attention to it. How about tripping over uneven terrain? You're, you're on your cell phone uh, or you're even gaming, looking down at a text. You fall over, you know, there's a little bump or a curve or something, you fall. Uh, running in or, or spilling hazardous uh, chemicals. How about confined spaces? Uh, explosives. People working around uh, demolition areas or explosives, and, and, of course, cell phones generate a frequency. They're on a frequency. 
explosives are detonated with a frequency. If your cell phone is in that same frequency range, there could be a chance that it would set off a charge. Who knows? I mean, it could happen. Obviously, it's happened because we've, we've got the, uh, we have a rule against that. And then think about the aspect of Fitbits, Apple Watches. The Fitbit is a big thing. You know, you look down at your Fit, you know, your Fitbit to find out how many paces you've walked today or your heartbeat or something like this, not paying attention, you run into something. It happens. Uh, there was an interesting study, Stony Brook University conducted a study and concluded that texting has the same effect as intoxication. Texting has the same effect as intoxication. Maybe we don't walk a little crooked, but the thing is, is we have lost spatial uh, uh, realm within ourselves and what's around us, and we walk into something. Right? If your company has a policy against doing work while intoxicated, then why allow your employees to text? Why allow your employees to be gaming? So the question is, how do we control it? Right? We have to invoke a clear policy with teeth that prohibits texting and talking while operating any kind of motorized equipment. Limit or prohibit the yell cell phone usage in, in specific areas where distractions can create employee hazards, regardless if operators, uh, if they're operators or not. Right? Doesn't have to be an operator. It could be just a regular routine employee, an admin employee walking across a job site or a construction site. Uh, company, anybody having company-issued cell phones, consider applications that block Internet access and texting while in moving vehicle or on cons construction sites. You can block them. There is equipment that can, gen that can generate a negative signal that would block out a cell phone usage. And on construction sites, cell have uh, cell phone-free zones. Post signs so designating them as such and only allow access during breaks or in designated areas. I actually had a supervisor when I was working down in Atlanta who caught one of his employees on the phone during work hours and took the employee's phone out of his hand and smashed it against the wall. I mean, just took it and shattered it against the wall uh, so they couldn't use it again. Um, even though we, the employer, uh, did pay for a new phone, uh, I'm sure the employee got the point. And, and by the way, if you're wondering, uh, the supervisor was bigger than the employee, so there was really no problems. Uh, just to let you know, maybe that's something to think about before you do that. All right. What about some issues that we? What about some of the other issues that we encounter? All right. What about some of these other issues? How about reduction in productivity? Uh, Forbes reports that 83.83 percent of millennials open text messages or within 90 seconds of receiving them. 83 percent of millennials open text messages within 90 seconds of receiving them. So if you got your cell phone in your pocket and it buzzes, you pull it out and you look at it. Right. Cell phone owners between 18 and 24 send an average of 109 texts a day. 109 texts a day. No, you know, repetitive stress uh, issues are going to be big in our thumbs and fingers here, I can tell you, in the years to come. That equates to about 3,200 a month. And if you're saying that, how much does that say they are not paying attention? And uh, what happens is if it's a personal issue, your spouse, uh, the child's sick, or your car just broke down or something along that line, then it's worse, okay? Then it's a lot worse. And then because this is occurring, think of everything that, that happens or that could happen. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing. We talk about the text messages can be used in litigation, the fact that you're texting and it happens in a vehicle. And, and if there's a fatality, well, then they will go back, the lawyers, the prosecuting attorney, will go back and subpoena your cell phone records, and they will see exactly at the time that the incident occurred, were you texting or were you not? All that is available to them, right? What about uh, pictures, videos that can be used for citations and, and litigation, right? We see it all the time, especially videos on YouTube. I, I don't know how people do it or why they want to do it, but they post it on YouTube. Confidential information ready, readily accessible. People going out and uh, taking pictures of drawings or financial records, compromising those. Let's say you're bidding. Uh, your company is bidding on a contract, and they take a picture or they take videos of something that, that could help this other company uh, to to win the contract over your company, uh, you could turn around and somehow use these to to make the bidding or the the bidding war, I guess you want to call it, uh, uh, more equitable on both sides. Uh, what about harassment, sexual harassment? Uh, uh, on one job site, I had a bunch of ladies uh, complain to me that some of the operators were taking their pictures 
why they were taking their pictures, I don't know. When I approached the operators, they said they were taking pictures of the equipment and not of the ladies. You know what? I could ask them for their phones and look at it, but in reality, I can't because it's not a company property. It's their own personal property. So that's another reason to get rid. And once again, why were the operators using their cell phones when they were operating a big piece of equipment? Okay. And then insurance rate. With any incident, accident, there comes, of course, the increased insurance rates, which now forces your company possibly out of a job market because of insurance or EMRs, anything along that line. There's a lot can be attributed to the cell phones, uh, the negativity of cell phones. So what does OSHA think of mobile devices on the job site, right? We have the Distracted uh, Driving Initiative from 2010. And now we also have, or well, have had, the General Duty Clause, uh, OSHA Act 5A1, which specifically states each employer shall furnish to each of his employees employment and a place of employment which are free from recognized hazards that are causing or are likely to cause death or serious physical harm to his employees. Free from recognized hazards. We now know cell phones are a recognized hazard. So if you have a cell phone on a construction site, if you have a cell phone in your vehicle, you are now subject to OSHA citations under the General Duty Act. General Duty Clause, I'm sorry, under the OSHA Act. Now, however, before OSHA can do this, there are some rules that protect us. OSHA must establish that a hazard is recognized in order to issue a General Duty Clause violation. Here's a kicker. Recognition of a hazard can be established by OSHA on the basis of industry recognition, employer recognition, or common sense recognition. Scary thought. Common sense recognition. What does OSHA consider to be common sense? What does society consider to be common sense? What do you and I consider to be common sense? A very, very ambiguous statement. But this only gives OSHA the teeth, the power, to cite you. And therefore, you have to be very cautious. Uh, when we talk about industry recognition, right, OSHA can establish industry recognition if the hazard is recognized in the employer's industry. Recognition by an industry other than the industry to which the employer belongs is generally insufficient to prove a general duty clause violation. Right? Recognition by an industry other than the industry to which the employer belongs is generally insufficient, which means if you're not a trucking company and you have no vehicles, you're, uh, you know, company vehicles for that, then in all reality, you you as a employer are really not familiar with that aspect of it. So OSHA couldn't come in and cite you saying, hey, your employees are driving a company vehicle, if they have one or two, but they're using a cell phone because that's not part of your industry. Recognized hazard can be established by evidence of actual employer knowledge. Okay, you're, you're, think about your safety policies and procedures. That is recognized knowledge. If you have something in your policy or procedure, that tells OSHA that you recognize there is a problem, there is a rule, there's a regulation specifically dealing with that certain process. In this case, the use of cell phones. And then finally, if industry or employer recognition of hazard cannot be established, recognition can still be established if OSHA concludes that any reasonable person would have recognized the hazard. For example, a loaded gun. Any reasonable person would recognize the hazard of pointing a loaded gun at themselves, right? OSHA could cite if you happen to be a, uh, a security company or something, all right? So these are things that we need to think about when it comes to cell phone usage. OSHA has teeth, and they're going to use it. They are going to use it. Believe me, it's getting more and more prevalent. This is something you really need to seriously think about. Just as silica dust has come to the forefront. Cell phone usage has been around since 2010, but OSHA now is stepping up their uh, focus on this because of the problems that people are having, right? All right, I don't think I need to beat this dead horse anymore. The positive side of mobile devices, there are positive sides, right? We, we know there are. I mean, more and more with the advent of technology with the advent of software, with the advent of, of uh, what's available out there on the market and the number of people that are making money by developing software. There, there's a positive side to softwares. First of all, it provides accurate and timely information, uh, whether it's through a, 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 
a, a blast, a text blast, something like that, you know, that comes out and says, uh, for example, I belong to a number of organizations where an incident or an accident occurs somewhere. Uh, if it's if depending on the, the severity, I, I would get a text that says such and such, uh, you know, employer, such and such uh, company was cited by OSHA or such and such employee was uh, severely injured or, or killed or whatever. Uh, when we talk about uh, the sides of engineering and architecture, we have building information modeling, BIM. All right, uh, as, your, as your engineers and architects walk around a building, a new construction site, or even on a, uh, as they're, they're starting to develop a site, uh, doing leveling and getting ready to pour cement in that, they can go out and actually with their cell phone, they're looking at exactly where the pour needs to take place, how much, if it's a 3,000 PSI or 10,000 PSI pour, so on and so forth. Where does, uh, you know, is the is there a conflict with the fire suppression system running into the HVAC system? Does one of them have to go up or down? We can never put a fire suppression system through an HVAC ductwork. Uh, so, so things like that, right? Well, there, there are definitely areas improved communication between different locations on the same job site. Timely emails, uh, immediate emergency action. And, and when I talk about this, I'm talking about some of the uh, newer technology we have out there are software. Uh, people can take into confined spaces. Your entrance will go into a confined space. As long as they're horizontal, the phone recognizes this. As soon as they go vertical, for example, they fall over, they pass out, the phone will immediately generate an alarm at some location which tells the rescue teams that they have a person down, uh, much along the line of what police uh, uh, are using now, police forces and, and so on and so forth, police department. Uh, but management, it's up to management to make that decision where and when a mobile device can be employed on an active job site. It's up to management because, remember, the ultimate authority in this is management, and OSHA will cite management up to $124,000 for a willful violation because they are aware there is a problem with cell phone usage on the job site. So what is it, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, what is it you can do? And and. Once again, I mean, I'm not much of a person for having, oh, you know, SOP, standard operating procedures, uh, because what I found is we have procedures that tell people how to read procedures, which is ridiculous, okay? Too many procedures just, just uh, encumbers us, uh, makes it worse and worse and worse. So, But we do need to develop a health and safety policy for use on, on, on mobile devices, on work sites, or in equipment, right? And this is a management process, but it starts with safety. It starts with us as safety professionals. So when we talk about this, of course, a policy and procedure should focus on the purpose. But why is it we need this policy and procedure? You know, and obviously it's to keep our employees safe, but it's a lot more than that. We're required under by ANSI to keep our, our, the local population safe from construction hazards. An employee walking around with a cell phone, a construction worker walking around with a cell phone not paying attention, could be a hazard to... Your, your local population. Uh, I mean, OSHA could go as far as to say that, right? ANSI, I think it's a 10, a 134, right? So we need a purpose. Who does it apply to, right? Does it apply to all employees or does it apply to all employees? Uh, does it just apply to your truckers, your drivers, uh, you know, on and on and on? Does it only apply to your construction site employees and not your office employees? But nothing says an office employee can't be texting and run into a door. Right. Uh, the types of devices that fall within the realm of the policy, right? Cell phones, tablets, iPods, Fitbits, so on and so forth. What are the specific company rules regarding that, such as times, location, as I mentioned? Can it, is it required in the office? Is it required only on construction sites? Is it only required in vehicles? On and on and on. Something to really look at when you do that. Uh, when can a cell phone be used? Uh, construction sites, usually it's only during breaks and uh, lunchtime. Other than that, cell phones cannot be used at all. I do a lot of uh, training, and I do a lot of consulting. And when I have consulting, I actually, when I do my final uh, last report or my report to management, I actually leave a basket or have uh, somebody leave a basket at the entrance and say, okay, please put all your cell phones in here. That way I've got their full attention. Uh, if not, why am I wasting my time? Uh, as we know, most of the time, as I mentioned, 109 text messages a day, right? Uh, think of a senior management, a VP, the president of a company, how many text messages they're getting or so, you know, on and on and on. So th something, things, definitely things to think about. 
And most importantly is your discipline policy for cell phone usage. Most important things. Do you have a three-strike rule? I mean, because we know three strikes and you're out. Well, you know, this person used it once, violated the rule. Okay. Uh, they got away lucky. Maybe strike two isn't so lucky. Maybe it's that foul ball that strikes somebody in the stands and kills that person in the stands. Things we need to think about. This is very important. Very, very important. All right. So some of the... All right. So I've given you the references here uh, that I used, and, and as I mentioned, uh, uh, there's some great information here, especially the one on the GSMA intelligence from 2019, the definitive data analysis for mobile industry. If management's interested in seeing exactly uh, the whole aspect of how mobile phones have taken over our day-to-day -day work and our day-to-day -day operations and our day-to-day -day life, let's be truthful. Uh, I, I'm, I'm appalled sometimes at the, the age of four, four and five-year-olds that are sitting in a restaurant on their cell phone playing games uh, that aren't paying attention, first of all, to, to, to the family life, but even what they're ordering. I mean, they just don't care. Or who knows if they even know what they're eating? Uh, it, it's just amazing what, what you see every day with cell phones. And then, of course, look at YouTube. Just type cell phone into YouTube and look at what happens over and over. But there's a lot of things. The National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, the traffic safety facts, uh, something that you may want to look at. OSHA launching the initiative to discourage texting while driving on the job. Uh, actually go into some of the standards. Go to OSHA's website, uh, OSHA.gov, and actually go in there and type under search uh, cell phones and, and read all the different things that have taken place and all the questions that are being asked uh, and, and being responded to by the letters of interpretation. Uh, there's a lot of things happening out there. Who's responsible? Who's not? Uh, I mean, uh, sure, we've got rules and regulations and by law, uh, you know, under five, you know, everybody focuses on general duty clause 5A1, which says we as employers have to keep our employees safe. But 5B actually says that the employee has to follow all rules and regulations that are relegated by uh, industry, by your employers, by the state, by whomever. But yet never do you see an, uh, an employee get cited like that by OSHA. And I'm not saying they should, but something to think about. Uh, Statista in 2019, the gamer statistics, things to think about, things to look at. There's, there's a, a, a plethora of information out there. You cannot believe it. Uh, and, and, but it's all important. It's all things that we can use to drive forward why cell phone usage on construction sites, why cell phone usage in vehicles should not happen, especially when it's company-related. We can't control their personal lives, but we can control what happens from 8 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock at night, or later if you're on second, third shifts. Uh, the life of a person, uh, even though you may only get charged uh, or fined, cited for $124,000 to live with the fact that one of your employees died because you, let them, you allowed them to use a cell phone and fell over the edge of a building because they weren't paying attention and a guardrail happened to be down. That's not something you want to live with. All right, thank you, Ralph, for your excellent insights and expertise. Um, before we start the q and I want to remind everyone of the evaluation survey we're asking you to complete. The survey should be appearing on your screen now. Your input is important because it will help us improve our future webcast. If you do not see the evaluation survey on your screen, please turn off your pop-up blocker. You may also access the survey by clicking the survey button near the lower right part of your screen. As a reminder, um, to, uh, to ask a question, simply type it in the text box in the lower left-hand corner and click the button for Submit Question. So let's get to our first question. How do you recommend employers facilitate an open dialogue about tech distractions and their effect on workplace safety? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, what I, I may... I think most of us are visual individuals. Uh, you know, things make uh, make better sense if we can visually recognize or, or visually understand what's happening. And that's why it's important that you take some of these statistics, for example, uh, that's available out there, and you actually show your employees uh, about what it's all about. You know, the, the, the aspect of OSHA citations and, and how it would affect the company's overall standings in industry and, and, and their longevity in, in the, the realm of the business that they're working in. 
uh, these are definitely things that make a, a big statement to the employees. And I, I think if you can get the employees on board, as, as you have to with safety, basic safety, uh, that might be where it works. So our next question, uh, what are some strategies to reduce distractions, maintain productivity, and uh, ensure safety? Well, wow. that, that's, uh, that, that is a great question, and uh, I'm sure we've, we've heard it on, on many different many different training, including fall protection, a confined space, so on and so forth. Uh, eye on the prize. I mean, uh, it's basically a behavior-based safety concept. I mean, you have to get your employees to understand that, uh, and, and it's not by force, even though a, a lot of people like to use that. I think as a society, that's where we're... Uh, we're kind of directed toward as, as being a little forceful to get people to understand what it's about. But I think just having employees understand the, 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 the final outcome, the severity of, of, of their actions, I mean, that's what it's all about. Uh, um, and, and productivity is a big thing. I mean, sit down with an employee who's, who's on a line of some sort, you know, uh, whether it's uh, automobiles or, or some sort of productivity line, and show them that, my gosh, you know, if, if, if you look at your cell phone and you lose a minute every hour, how much time do we lose over a day, over a week, over a month, over the year, so on and so forth? And if there's 100 employees, multiply that times 100. Uh, and, and then you look at productivity, and then you look at how much money the company, of course, is, is losing, and that could affect the bottom line with employees because may or might be layoffs, so on and so forth. So uh, that, that's the only way I can put that. So our next question, uh, when and how should mobile device policies and practices be communicated to employees? Uh, pretty much like everything else upon hiring, that should be part of the uh, human resource package when they're hired. Uh, they should, the employee should sign. It should be part of the uh, safety training, I guess, as they come into the company. And then I would say annually after that, unless, of course, you see that there is a a problem on job sites or, or operating equipment or so forth uh, that may require, uh, let's say, semi-annually, something along that line. It's all driven by, driven by what is um, what is happening. What is what are the day-to-day -day, uh, opportunities for failure based on uh, cell phone usage, and and where do you go from there? Our next question: Where can I find templates for? specific safety plans for mobile usage in the workplace? Oh, I mean, you can do a search out there. There are a number of, uh, I, I'd go out and just do a, a, a basic search, just do cell phone policy, and uh, you'll find uh, there are a large, there's a, a very good number of uh, cell phone uh, usage policies out there, mobile device policies out there for, for vehicles and for job sites and so on. Uh, most of those, of course, uh, I don't think they're, um, copyrighted as such, but uh, you could go ahead and probably make changes to those. I, I have one that I use, and uh, if you want to send me a note, I could probably get you a copy of the one that I use. I have no problems allowing people to use those. Uh, I mean, it, the way I look at it, if it's OSHA, OSHA is public. OSHA is bought by the people. It's paid for by our taxes. So it really have no, no copyright on something like that. Our next question, uh, what are you typically seeing relative to cell phone use policy bans versus uh, kind of hands-free allowance? Uh, I think the states have more, uh, are, are driven more by that. Uh, for example, up northeast Maryland, New York, New Jersey, so on and so forth, the hand-free policy in vehicles and so forth. Uh, I, I know on the job site, it doesn't matter whether it's hand-free or whether you're holding it up to your head. The fact is, hands-free, you're still listening. Your, your mind is still being that, that aspect of the, the brain. Instead of focusing on where you're going or what you're doing, you're now, it's now focusing on the next sentence that it's going to be talking about or the next question that it's going to hear, the next response, something along that line. That takes over uh, your, your, basically your movements. I mean, you're not paying attention to where you're going. So actually using a cell phone or hands-free, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Your, your focus is somewhere else when you're talking, especially when it's a uh, you get in a, a heated, uh, you know, discussion, uh, whether it's with uh, a member of the company or, or, or a loved one or whatever. It, it's always going to be a distraction of some sort. I don't think that really matters. 
So what is the best practice to address issues where employees rely on their cell phone to be the, their primary contact with dependents in the event of an emergency or a, a sick child, babysitter issues, et cetera? That, that, that's a real good question. I'm glad that was asked. I, I know uh, uh, what we did, we were down in, in Puerto Rico. We had a, uh, cutting up shifts uh, down in Puerto Rico. And uh, what we did is we gave everybody, uh, all employees had a card that they gave to their spouses. And on that card was a main office number, which was our receptionist. And if it was, if the, if it was an emergency of some sort, then the call would go to the receptionist and we would immediately contact that employee. Um, I, but but you, you still have to take away, and I understand that, believe me. Family is very important. Family is number one, and, and I understand that, and sick children. But at, at, at the end of the day, it does your wife or your children or whomever no good if, if, you're, if you're no longer alive and, and you, you died because of a cell phone use issue or something like that. I mean, um, I, I, so that would be what I would recommend is to have some sort of a card given out to loved ones. Uh, that they could contact somebody else and they could immediately contact you. Most job sites now have radios, two-way communications. Uh, they could call immediately, get a hold of Frank, have him call his wife, something along that line. Our next question, how are wearable, other wear, you know, wearable devices and forced, you know, watches, fit, fit, that sort of thing? Oh. Uh, I, I I didn't catch the first part of that question. I'm sorry. I know it deals with the wearable devices, but what was the first part? Yes. Oh yeah, I was I was just giving examples. Of, you know how are how are wearable devices enforced? Uh, kind of watches, oh. Apple watches, Fitbit, oh, that sort of thing. Oh. Yes, sir. Uh, I I would I would uh, enforce those the same as I would a cell phone. People are still distracted. They're still paying attention. Uh, some of the newer watches you can play games on. Uh, I mean, at, at my age, it's not something I would try and do. But for you know your millennials, 18 to 29, it might be something good for them. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, you're walking, you're looking at your heartbeat, uh, you're looking at uh, it's a stress levels up. These these the Fitbits and everything do everything for you. I mean, it, it's just amazing what these the new technology can do. You're still being distracted. Uh, it, it, it's the same. You're not talking, and and some of them you can talk on on your, your I guess your new phones. Uh, watch phones or whatever you want to call them. So, uh, I, I rec personally would recommend just getting rid of all of it. And, and, and some job sites, uh, those aren't even allowed because they're uh, they're considered a jewelry of some sort. Because electronic devices can be potential hazards, um, I should should I revise my uh, job hazard analyses and uh, add electronic devices as as a hazard? Most definitely. I, I think that's a great idea. And, and, I mean, for example, the aspect of uh, having a cell phone on the job, uh, you know, what, what becomes of that? You know, people are distracted. What becomes distracted? Once they become distracted, uh, you know, spatial awareness goes away. And, and, and that is a hazard. Uh, the, the fact that the employees are not focused on their jobs and they're focused on something else now introduces a hazard. And that, that's a good point. I would put that into a JHA most definitely. Fitbits, anything along that line that would distract an employee. Uh, that's that's a very good uh, recommendation and a very good thought. I, I I really haven't thought of that until you just mentioned it, but I can see how it would work. So our next question: How can we get upper management to buy into this info? Our policy encourages people not to use phones while driving, but they can use hands-free if they do use their phones. It says our director wants this wording because she uses her phone while driving and doesn't want to break policy. Right, and, and, and that's a good point. Uh, the company I work for in Atlanta, the CEO, when I we came out to a I, – I actually went out to a no cell phone policy in, in, in company vehicles, and he pushed back on that saying that, you know, he did most of his business on the cell phone while he was driving long distances and so forth, and, and that's understandable. Uh, I mean, I would, I would definitely go into uh, showing statistics in that. I mean, we've already seen uh, years ago – uh, out of, uh, I want to say, uh, I, I believe it was Utah State University, where they talked about the uh, people on cell phones while they were driving were the equivalent of a 70-something-year-old person that was driving. I mean, their their reaction time was cut down considerably, so on and so forth. I mean, we have this other study that talks about uh, you're, you're, you're almost driving while intoxicated. 
Uh, these are things that really make a big statement to, to management. And then at the same time, I would use the statistics that OSHA has out there, the, the fatalities that have occurred because people have been using cell phones. And I'm sure we've heard it a hundred times, if not more. Uh, oh, I would never do something like that. You know, we, we can't say that because every day is a new day. Every minute is a new minute. I mean, something could happen within a minute. Uh, these are things that we really have to think about. And, and management has to start thinking about this now that OSHA is, is using the general duty clause to to strike out at, at you know the employers that are allowing things like this to happen, but use use this PowerPoint, uh, use slides from the PowerPoint, use the uh, whatever you can, historical data, anything like that is going to make a big statement to management. And if they don't come on board and something occurs, at least you can feel good because you did something to try and make that change. Our next question, how do you help explain the difference between management being allowed to utilize mobile devices in a safe manner um, compared with line-level you know, line level employees that are banned from having them on their person while on shift? Uh, wow. Don't, <laughs> don't do as I say, do as I do type of thing. Uh, it's, it's, uh, that, that's one of those tough things, for example, same with, personal protective equipment, you know, some managers will walk out on a job site not wearing safety boots. Employees see it and say, wait a minute, they don't have to wear it. Why do I have to wear it? Uh, that, that's a great question, and I, I, I wish I could answer that because if I, I, I could, I'd go around the, the country doing the training on that. I, I, I honestly believe it's, it's, it's management. Management has to be on board. Management has to understand that they – Set the example. Safety begins at the very top. We all know that. Some people say safety begins with you as an individual, definitely. But safety as a company, within a company, begins with the managers because employees are going to look at management and going to say, wait a minute, they can use a cell phone, why can't we? So on and so forth. Uh, some managers will say, well, I can use cell phone because I don't have to be on the line, uh, you know, counting bolts or counting nuts or, or putting, you know, uh, screws into this piece of equipment or something. But in all reality, it shouldn't be like that. Management should be in line with the employees. Your company, your team, and as a team, you should function as a team. As a team, you should work as a team. As a team, you should support each other. Uh, I guess for our next question, where could you find some of the numbers referred to for distraction quality? Uh, distraction causing uh, quality and or production issues? Do you have any studies out there? There's also another question that has that also talks about do you have do you know of any studies that show the effect of cell phone usage on production? Not you know to be truthful I really don't um, and I and I've looked at that I mean especially when it comes to you know the uh, your 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 quality QAQC quality assurance, quality control, uh, when it comes to uh, 9001, so on and so forth. Uh, I, I, that's something I could try and investigate more. Uh, there has to be something out there somewhere, uh, but I'm, I, I, I think because of legal ramifications, a lot of companies don't come out and uh, publish that information because all of a sudden now there might be a focus of why is it uh, – you know, Volkswagen is having all these incidents occurring and, and come to find out maybe it could be attributed to cell phone usage. Who knows? I, I mean, that's far-fetched, but uh, there, there could be legal ramifications dealing with those kind of statistics. So maybe that's why you might not find them, but I'm not saying they probably aren't out there. Uh, and, and if you want, that's something I can definitely look into. Yeah, our next question, how do we get the buy-in of mitigating mobile phone use with, uh, with millennials? I guess younger people. <laughs> Good question. Uh, wow, and uh, that, that could be—I'm not going to say difficult, but I—I uh, I, I hate to say it, but it's almost as if uh, as if millennials were born with cell phones in their hands. It's—it's uh, it's, uh, statistics, statistics, statistics. I guess is, is a way to say it. Uh, I mean, you've got to show them. Uh, and have them um, have them understand exactly what's what's happening with when they're on their cell phones and and so forth. I mean, lost time. Uh, and, and as we talked about, 109 messages, text messages a day. 109 text messages. Holy moly! I mean, if that's even a minute, 
to, to look at it, and, and we know it takes longer than that to respond. I mean, there are some great typers out there, keyboard users. Uh, but even then, I mean, you're, you're talking two or three hours of productivity loss, two or three hours of maybe focus on, on studying and so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of issues involved here. And, that's, and I'm, I'm a big historical data. I'm a big data person. Um, and this is what I use um, to, to get out there and try and show people uh, what's happening as they're, as they're doing what they're doing as they're, uh, in their everyday job or everyday life uh, when it comes to certain aspects of that. For our next question, how can you persuade someone that talking on the phone while driving is bad when they claim it's the same as talking to someone who's sitting in the car next to them? That, that's a, and I've heard that uh, I've heard that the same thing before. Uh, you know, if, if we look at this from an ergonomic point of view, and maybe this is a little far-fetched for the ergonomists that are out there, but imagine holding the cell phone. If it's hand-free, that might be different, but imagine holding a cell phone up to your, your, your ear. Uh, you're constricting the blood flow in your arm, so on and so forth, okay? Uh, and like I said, that might be a far-fetched aspect, but there, there is. I mean, if you're talking on a cell phone, at least you're still focusing forward. I mean, your head isn't moving side to side. When you're talking to somebody in the car, traditionally you want that eye contact, so you would turn over and look. Uh, I, uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I wish I had an answer for that, uh, but it's one of those uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, how can you argue with, with uh, you know, with science, I guess? Uh, it, it, is, it is the same. You're still distracted. Um, and I don't know why. When I'm talking to somebody in car, I don't miss my turn off, but yet when I've got the phone up to my head, I miss the turnoff. I don't know why. That's a good question. Maybe because the blood flow is restricted to my brain. I don't know. Who knows why? Uh, I, I'm sorry, but that's the best I can do. But hopefully, I kind of, I, I don't disagree with you, but at the same time, I don't agree with it. You mentioned using the three strike system when catching employees on their phone. What are some strategies that you've come across that seem to be more successful than others when it when it comes to mitigating cell phone use? I mean, it, it's not. That was just an example, uh, a three-strike rule that, that some companies have put into, uh, for some reason, um, maybe because uh, this is America and, uh, and uh, baseball is a, the great pastime for Americans, that three strikes seems to be the magic number. Uh, I, I personally don't think there should be a three-strike rule. I, I believe that if there's a policy or procedure that's out there that, that states that your employees should not be using a cell phone in a company vehicle or so on and so forth, that if they if they done it once and that employee obviously doesn't want to follow rules and regulations now there may be mitigating circumstances for example uh, it was an emergency or something like that but at that point probably your policy or procedure should say that they should pull over stop the vehicle go into a driver uh, you know a parking lot or something uh, or if you have employees that are using uh, cell phones in a restricted area for example uh, on a job site that you have that's that you have a lot of heavy equipment going around uh, a lot of activity uh, and, and in those instances, you may want to tell have a locker where self, the employees will put their cell phone in. An employee takes a cell phone and he, he's out there, he's caught talking or she's caught talking on the cell phone. Uh, then those, as far as I'm concerned, is, is requires an a, a immediate response, which traditionally is get them off the job site. Um, but that's the type of person I am, and, and not everybody's like I am. So, what are the employers is our employers legal obligations if an employee is in an accident while on duty and talking on the phone mm. uh, you know this is this is our great litigious society uh, we never know what's going to happen i mean I, I I do believe that if you if you don't as an employer have a policy against cell phone usage on the job site or in your company. Uh, then you're leaving yourself open for some very large uh, uh, issues when it comes to legal ramifications, whether it's it's your employee. Uh, I, I don't think your employee would sue you if, if they're drawing workers' comp, but think about a third-party suit. Uh, the, the employee's family uh, would, could sue you in all reality. Uh, or even the, the injured party. Maybe your employer, employee wasn't injured. Maybe it was somebody else, the injured employee or um, the injured party suing the uh, your company uh, because something occurred because you're on a cell phone. If you don't have a policy, you're, you're leaving yourself open for major uh, legal ramifications 
and and that's one of the first things I would do is to have some sort of policy on on cell phone usage uh, to, to protect yourself from those employees that that do use cell phones, and most of us do. So I'm not going to say they don't. Uh, that's 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 the best I could say dealing with that aspect. Now there might be two sides to this question. Um, how dangerous is it to fuel a vehicle while on a cell phone? <laughs> You know, we, we've seen we've we've seen the videos on YouTube. Uh, we've heard about it, uh, the static electricity concept of uh, the, the the fumes, I guess, igniting because of static electricity. I I will neither say yay nor nay about that because I've seen people filling up their gas at a gas station while they're smoking a cigarette, and, and that's an open flame, uh, you know, versus a a static uh, spark from a cell phone. Uh, the, the, the rules there are if you if you're using a cell phone, of course, to touch the vehicle uh, to get rid of the static uh, electricity and that as you're as you're fueling your your vehicle and don't get back into the vehicle uh, sitting down or whatever because once again you generate uh, static electricity. Uh, now, if you do because it's cold and you you know even with the air condition or the uh, heater running, let's say it's a winter time, you got the heater running, you've got a drier air. Uh, of course, you're going to, as you get out, you're going to slide against the seat. You're probably generating more static electricity. I would get out once again and touch the vehicle and then touch the gas, uh, your, your uh, gas dispenser. But uh, traditionally, I, I think over and over, we're finding fewer and fewer instances where uh, gasoline fumes are being ignited by cell phones. Can a... Can an OSHA compliance officer give a citation for a driver observed um, kind of using a mobile device while driving? I, I believe you mentioned general duty clause, but um, is it is that overall or is that for individual instances? I, well, I mean, it, it, it probably, I mean, that's up to, it. of course, it would have to be a, a company vehicle, I, I guess. Uh, it would have to be identified as a company vehicle. Uh, and, and secondly, it probably have to occur on a, a company job site or a, a job site or something that OSHA has, uh, you know, control over or, uh, you know, the the opportunity to to watch over something like that. Um, sure, they could. I mean, if if you're if especially in a state that has a hands-free policy or hands-free law, uh, OSHA could definitely cite you. I mean, OSHA. Let's be truthful. General duty clause, uh, as as we talked about, there is is free from you know known hazards, and we know. Now, there's a big focus by OSHA, National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, so on and so forth, against cell phone usage in vehicles. So in all reality, OSHA could cite you. Uh, you know, could it stand up in a, in, you know, against the, uh, the, re the commission or whatever? I don't know. But, but that's not something you really want to go through because it's going to cost you money to get lawyers and so forth. So finally, just not necessarily a question, but just a note. Uh, someone is mentioning that Fitbits may be required in some companies as a part of a wellness program. Um, so. Right, and I, I, I know you're, you're right, but uh, and and that's great within the company, but uh, you know, on a job site, is that something you want to have out there? Uh, you know, what, what's your company's what's your company's policy on 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 cell phones or mobile devices? versus a Fitbit. I mean, is that, you know, is that contradictory? Uh, that's something to think about because an employee could say, wait a minute, I mean, they're, they're, in, a, they're in a fitness program and they can wear their, their Fitbit, which gives them all this information, but I can't have a cell phone on my job site, which gives me all my information. Uh, once again, there's a contradictory uh, issue involved here where, in all reality, they could take it to HR and up the, up the, the ladder if they wanted to. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. I'm sorry we didn't get to every, uh, everyone's questions, but all of today's unanswered questions will be forwarded to our speaker. Once again, I hope you take the time to fill out the evaluation survey on your screen to give us your feedback. That ends today's Safety and Health Magazine webcast. I'd like to thank Ralph Blessing, everyone at Columbia Southern University, and, of course, all of our listeners. Have a safe day.